Hello, I'm Mike Bartlett, Chair of the CSCE National History Committee, and I'm here to provide a brief history of the Middle Road Bridge, which is being celebrated at this virtual conference as a CSCE historic site. The Middle Road Bridge is a 16 foot wide, 80 foot long reinforced concrete arch truss bridge constructed in 1909. In the next few minutes, we'll briefly introduce the bridge designers, Barber and Young of Toronto, and review their perceptions of bridge aesthetics. We'll introduce the contractor, O.L. Hicks of Oakville, and describe some of the innovations he adopted for the construction. We'll compare the Middle Road Bridge to other bridges of the time, both steel trusses and concrete arch trusses. And we'll review the plaque wording and make some conclusions. This Google Earth satellite shows the city of Mississauga to the left and the city of Toronto to the right. The Middle Road Bridge crosses Etobicoke Creek spanning between Mississauga and Toronto. It was designed by the Toronto-based firm of Barber & Young. James Franklin Barber, known as Frank, was born in Milton and attended Mount Allison University and the School of Practical Science at the University of Toronto, which later became the Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science there. He apprenticed under James McDougall, the York County engineer, and when McDougall passed away in 1908, assumed McDougall's consulting practice. He was engineer for York and Haldeman counties and for York, Vaughan, Etobicoke, King, and Bruce townships. And in 1915, at age 40, he was an associate member of the Canadian Society of Civil Engineers, as the CSCE was known in those days. Barber was a prolific bridge designer, designing over 200 bridges between 1909 and 1920. Two of his more famous uh, bridges are shown here. Uh, at the left is the Ashburton Bridge in Peterborough, which was the longest reinforced concrete arch span in Canada when it was constructed in 1921. At the right, we have a short span steel suspension bridge, Sewell's Road Bridge in Toronto, which was very cost effective. It cost less than, well, approximately $1,000 to build. Clarence Richard Young was born in 1869 in Picton, Ontario, and also attended the School of Practical Science. He subsequently earned a Bachelor of Applied Science in Civil Engineering from the University of Toronto in 1905. He spent two years uh, doing municipal drainage surveys and designing highway and railway bridges before joining the U of T first as a part-time lecturer, then as a professor, then he became head of the civil engineering department, and finally he was the fourth dean of the Faculty of Applied Science and Engineering between 1941 and 1949. He joined uh, Barber's consulting practice in uh, 1909 and was active there for two years. By 1910, they designed at least 26 bridges and overseen construction of 19 of them. Young was a proponent of aesthetic bridges. In a 1911 lecture to the CSCE Toronto branch, he advanced three causes of unaesthetic bridges. The first, he said, was adverse locations. The second was parsimoniousness on the part of the purchasing municipality. And the third was a general lack of good taste in the people and in some extent, the engineers themselves. He advanced 10 principles for bridge engineers to design attractive bridges, including beauty coming chiefly from the general form and legitimate, legitimate ornamentation. Many of the bridges constructed at the turn of the last century were wrought iron or steel Pratt through trusses. In a 1909 paper, Barber and Young dismissed this trend, saying the general form of a steel truss is often decided with no thought of aesthetic design and a few dollars afterwards spent on ornamental railings or other details will never remedy this defect. Instead, they argued that mathematics and aesthetics should go hand in hand. The aesthetic design of bridges must to a large extent always be associated with mathematical analysis and a thorough knowledge of the properties of materials. 
This 1909 photograph of the Middle Road Bridge uh, shows its arch truss form with web diagonals designed to resist shear due to unsymmetric loadings. So the arch rib can be designed as a simple set of two force members. The live load design criteria were simple, a 10 ton vehicle and a distributed load of 100 pounds per square foot. They allowed a 50% dynamic load allowance, recognizing that the traffic would be farming related, probably mostly animals. And they used quite low allowable stresses, 430 PSI for the concrete and about 6,500 PSI for the steel, which meant that that compression rib has a fairly large cross section. The contractor for the bridge was Octavius Lang Hicks, who was the most active and widely known bridge contractor around Toronto. To overcome the local council's reluctance to constructing the new form, the arch truss, using a new material, reinforced concrete, Hicks agreed to accept the contract at the price of the lowest tender for a steel structure at the site. His other business included a hotel on Lakeshore Road, yacht and shipbuilding facilities, a commercial fishing fleet, and a brickyard. In 1880, Hicks patented a sliding seat for racing shells. He's pictured here on the Hubber River with world champion scholar Ned Hanlon in the background in 1904. And Hicks built, uh, invented and built the flotilla merry-go-round around the turn of the last century where model replicas of famous ships were towed around a water course. The concrete of the Middle Road Bridge was placed in six days, working continuously from dawn till dusk. Hicks developed an ingenious device to pretension, pretension the reinforcing steel rods in the tension cord before the concrete was placed to limit hair cracking under the full service load. This early application of pre-stressing would probably not have been very durable, given what we now recognize to be long-term losses due to creep and shrinkage of the concrete and steel relaxation. Bags of ice were laid to prevent newly placed concrete from setting at construction joints. Barber and Young's paper in 1909 states this procedure was very effective. The next morning, the concrete was perfectly plastic as if it had just been poured. This photograph was probably taken at the official opening of the bridge on October 27, 1909. The bridge had been in use since September, as is perhaps evident from the photo, which shows animal droppings on the deck of the bridge. Structural proof load tests were conducted, and a herd of Alderman John Dunn's cattle, which had come to the river to drink, were driven onto the bridge. Barber and Young claim in their 1909 paper that the weight of the cattle was probably 35 tons, and the vibration under these loads was very slight. They say that the Middle Road Bridge is the second arch truss constructed in North America, recognizing the approaches of the Speakman Street Bridge in Nashville, which opened in 1909, to be the first. The Speakman Street Bridge approaches feature three lines of deck uh, arches that are somewhat obscured by the concrete verticals. The 1998 Historic American Engineering Report on the bridge does not even include photographs of the concrete arches, but it does report a controversy about the design at the time of construction. The designer, Howard M. Jones, acknowledged a lack of accurate knowledge of the distribution of stresses due to eccentric loadings and paid for a one-tenth scale model to be constructed and tested to demonstrate the strength of the bridge. So let's wind up. The CSCE historic site plaque will state that the Middle Road Bridge, constructed in 1909 primarily to carry farming traffic, was the first con reinforced concrete arch truss bridge in North America. The Toronto-based firm of Barber and Young designed the structure following the principle that mathematics and aesthetics go hand in hand. James Franklin Barber, 1875 to 1935, was a very prominent bridge engineer of over 200 bridges in Ontario between 1908 and 1920. 
Clarence Richard Young, 1869 to 1964, joined the Department of Civil Engineering at the University of Toronto in 1907. And the builder, Octavius Lang Hicks, 1873 to 1930, was a widely known bridge contractor around Toronto. This is the proof of the plaque. And in conclusion, the Middle Road Bridge is a worthy CSCE civil engineering historic site. Thanks for your attention. I look forward to responding to your questions.